listening to Tapped In, Buckham County's Half Hour to Empower on WRES 100.7 FM in Asheville. Listen up and get tapped into local important resources, information, and topics. Learn more about the topics of today's show at buncombecounty.org. Okay, it's time to get tapped in. Hello, hello, and greetings to all that are listening to my voice. This is... Tapped in, and I'm one of your hosts, Zakia Bill Rogers. And I'm Leonard Jones. Leonard and I come to you from Communications and Public Engagement Department of Buncombe County, where the real heroes wear capes. Today we have Susan Creed, Communicable Disease Nurse Supervisor at Buncombe County's Health and Human Services. Welcome. Susan. As well, we also got Stacy in here as yes. well. Hey, She's a part hi. of the case team, so we don't want to be amiss and not speak to you as well. So. Yes, we are. So um, we're, we're not. We want to act like Stacy's not here, but she's here. And <laughs> she may chime in if she wants to. But Susan, tell us about yourself. Who are you, so our listeners know who they're talking to? All right. Well, my name is Susan Creed. I'm the supervisor for um, the Communicable Disease Program at Buffalo County Health and Human Services. I've been with the county for 20 years, wow. and I've been in the Communicable Disease Program for approximately 12, 13 years now. So, yeah. That is awesome. 20 years. 20 years. Oh, it's wow. a good place to work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, question. Oh, go ahead, Leonard. What is the Communicable disease it's a disease that you get that can be spread from individual to individual or okay. animal to individual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so are there a lot of diseases that can be spread from animal to person because you said from animals sure to, yeah. Mm -hmm. really yeah. yeah they're called zoonotic yeah but mean? north carolina has approximately 90 reportable mm -hmm. conditions communicable diseases and they're reportable by law mm -hmm. so anytime a physician a provider a laboratory um, have a positive test for mm -hmm. any number of those um, illnesses it is sent to our office and yeah. we, we do an investigation on each and every one mm -hmm. and that's from anthrax to zika and so that, that brings me to another question, just thinking about it. Um, so you say it's reported by law. What all information is shared about it? Is it just that you have a case in a certain area or is it self-identifying information as well? Well, we do an interview and so we get the demographics of the individual. Mm -hmm. Elsewise, we can't do the interview. Okay. And we make a personal phone call to that person and go through um, an investigation tool mm -hmm. that is designed to match the disease that we're looking at. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then that gets reported to the state of North Carolina, DHHS, mm -hmm. and then they share that information with the CDC. And then it comes back that same route to mm -hmm. the state, to the local branch, okay. and decisions are made. Oh, wow. So it's, it's intense. It is. Okay, we'll talk more about that because we have, we have a special purpose today. So could you give us an overview of the current mosquito and tick season in western North Carolina? Because we know this is our favorite time of year where all the bugs that we love attack us. Ticks and mosquitoes. It must be sweet. Yes. Um, absolutely. Um, as mosquito and tick season has arrived in Western North Carolina, Buncombe County Health and Human Services is urging residents to take proactive steps to prevent mosquito and tick bites. This is important because these pests can carry diseases that pose significant health risks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember we had that, that whole tip and toss uh, um, initiative years ago. And I think people, you know, because it hasn't had, we haven't had a lot of rain, but we did have some recently. Um, even that small area, the little bowl that's outside with, with old rainwater in there can be a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah. It can pack mm -hmm. thousands of oh, mosquitoes, yeah. a bottle cap. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's important to when you're walking around your house to make sure you're tipping those things over or making sure that water is not there. Um, but with that being said, what type of um, diseases do mosquitoes carry that are dangerous to us? Well, in our county, um, the number one uh, disease is lacrosse encephalitis. Oh, wow. And that is a devastating mm -hmm. um, illness. It primarily affects children mm -hmm. and it can have significant neurological sequelae. Oh, wow. 
Mm, yeah. But if you're a traveler, mm -hmm. you leave the county, you leave the state, you leave the country primarily. Yeah. You can bring back dengue, Zika, chikungunya, mm -hmm. malaria. So my question around that is, because um, there are a lot of things, but you, as just someone living, you get bit by mosquitoes a lot. So how, what are some of the warning signs that you should be aware of if you are bitten? My number one recommendation mm -hmm. with bites is to document it. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty simple thing to do. We all have cell phones now. You can put it in there, or your paper calendar. But if you're at a picnic mm -hmm. and your kids are getting chewed up with mosquito bites, or you are, mm -hmm. make a note about that. Oh, picnic on Sunday mm -hmm. um, at Carrier Park, you know tons of bites, right? Mm -hmm. So then you have a piece of information that you can launch from if in a week or two, you start to have symptoms of yeah. something. You can go to your doctor and say, hey, I got attacked by mosquitoes about a week or two ago, and now mm -hmm. I'm starting to feel all these things. Mm -hmm. And this is super duper important with ticks as well. Oh, wow. If you find a tick on your body, document it. Where it was, it bit me on the thigh, you know, or the, back of my head, I found it a couple of days later. Mm -hmm. You pull it out appropriately, you kill it, get rid of it, mm -hmm. and you document it on your calendar. You know, where were you? Oh, I was hiking up at uh, Craggy Gardens, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and that night I found a tick on the back of my head, you know, mm -hmm. and you put that date down, and within six to 30 days or five to 30 days, if you start to have symptoms, you need to absolutely get to the doctor right away. And what are some symptoms that, that you should be looking for? Right. Let me preface it with okay. <clears throat> not all ticks carry disease. Okay. okay. Not all of them do. <laughs> yeah. and that's why you want to wait and see. Mm -hmm. um, symptoms, and it depends on the culprit, mm -hmm. um, but traditionally fatigue, mm -hmm. swelling in your joints, um, muscle pain, mm -hmm. fever, headache um, and in certain situations it uh, like with Lyme it can manifest into neurological or cardiac situation oh, wow. yeah yeah rash don't let me forget the rash with uh, Lyme and Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever they both mm -hmm. have rash so what are some of the trends in the area around ticks and mosquito bites and disease well, in 2023, North Carolina had nearly 900 cases reported. Um, but in Buncombe, we had confirmed 43. Mm -hmm. Now we got like 190 reports. It's a very tedious process mm -hmm. to confirm a case. Mm -hmm. um, if one little piece of the puzzle is missing, we cannot confirm it. Oh. Mm -hmm. And they do that so that when we do meet our threshold of becoming endemic, mm -hmm. we're 100% sure. Okay. And this, you said 900 cases, and this is tick and mosquito yeah. born. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. And so, so include, and you say it was 43 cases in Buckham County. Mm -hmm. And so are these like, okay, these are not just reported, these are reported and found to be, uh, okay. Yeah. And so when that happens, so if 43, that, and we have a population of how many? How many people do we have in Buckingham County? Uh, 200, so, yeah. yeah, I was oh. gonna say 300. So yeah. yeah. So, so we, so out of the all those folks, only 43 cases. So is that like a good number, or is that like a whoa? We need to. to that's not a good number. That's not. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> that's not a good number. I mean. It's better than a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but okay. So the the I'll case is coming in, and um, I mean, just the other day, in one day, mm -hmm. we have seven reports of Lyme disease come in mm -hmm. in one day. And then, like, some do you like like have seven, and then you have no reports for like weeks, or is it like? I really hate to say that. Due to climate change, mm -hmm. primarily, in mm -hmm. my expert opinion, um, we're seeing it year round now. Mm -hmm. When we used yeah. to hit our winter months and our temperatures dropped mm -hmm. to freezing, it killed our tick population. Uh -oh. They hatch at 70 degrees. Mm 
Oh, wow. And we have 70 degrees on Christmas now. Oh, yeah. You know? So, it's, it's, it's one of the primary investigations that we're doing now. And I live with Ashwa Native, and the first time we had a 70 degree Christmas, they lost it. (laughs) I I had to hold him. (laughs) say, it's okay. It's not you. But it's not right. But yeah, it's not right. right. But But in in if, if, if ticks, hatch at 70 degrees and we are seeing this year round so we're probably also having to protect our animals as m- more as and then we have before because I know some people yeah they give them their tick and flea stuff all year round but they may be a little lax during the winter right and so now we cannot not a good idea yes no. okay no. okay so everyone you hear that it is time to become um what is the word I'm looking for Leonard um, proactive. Proactive and always, <laughs> look at you, see that's why I keep it on my hand, to always make sure that we are being very, you know, aggressive with, hey, these things are out here all year round now. So, right. yeah. And so after hearing some of the statistics mm-hmm. um, and some of the trends that we have in here in the area, what are some of the preventative measures yes. that the community can take to prevent themselves from exposure? Tip and toss. <laughs> yes. So explain tip and toss. Tip and toss. Anything that you have in your on your property mm-hmm. or your neighbor's property, which can often be a problem because you might keep your place very tidy, but your neighbor doesn't. Mm-hmm. And mosquitoes are usually, or certain mosquitoes are usually about 100 feet from you. Mm-hmm. They found a little hidey hole mm-hmm. and that's where they hang out. But old tires or tire swings, if your kids have tire swings, drill a couple of holes in the bottom of it so that water mm-hmm. drains. Mm-hmm. Um, your bird bath, your pet dishes, uh, bottle cups, you know, bottle caps or um, planters, you know, anything like that. Anything where water can collect. A mosquito, like a bottle cap. I mean, that's all they need and they can put thousands of eggs in there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there are things that you can buy. They're called dunks. Um, they look like little briquettes mm-hmm. that you could toss into standing water if you have problem with that on your mm-hmm. property, you know, your drainage is off or any number of things. You could throw a dunk in there and that will kill. Um, you've got to check your screens, you know, keep your screens tight and in good shape without mm-hmm. holes in them, um, doors and windows. Um, gutters are another big yeah. gutters. source. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. So just in thinking about that, you should, with it, singing your little tip and toss tune, mm-hmm. go survey your property, Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and talk to your neighbors about it too. You know, because mm-hmm. if your neighbor's not tipping and tossing his bird bath regularly, mm-hmm. they're gonna come over and bite you. They're just gonna breathe there, but they're flying a hundred feet to bite you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And tree holes. Tree holes. Oh, wow. Filling tree holes, yeah. They love tree holes because they're cool and they're dark and they can hide down low in them mm-hmm. and collect a little water in there. And they What's just... a tree hole? <laughs> <laughs> it's just what it is. <laughs> it is a hole in your tree trunk. <laughs> yeah, you know how like you got a tree and it has like a hole and usually you see like the people when they have, they have the owl sticking out there. Yeah. yeah. But that's usually not what's in there. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Five that's... million mosquitoes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's what they all say. I know, right? In, in 2000, um, spiders. Right? Yeah. <laughs> all the things right. that nightmares are made of. Yes. Um, but, I mean, you know, that's so, you know, I don't, I guess, you know, being a kid, we didn't, you know, we just like, oh, that was part of life, mm-hmm. you know? And I think, of course. you know, because who didn't get bit by mosquitoes? Or it depend on what area you lived in, if you were outside rolling around with your dogs, who didn't have an occasional tick on the back of their leg or something, you know? 100%. Yeah, and so now it's like, oh, wait a minute, this is stuff we just did not know. And then you had that person that grew up and was like, oh, they had Lyme disease. Yeah. And then you find out why and how, you're like, oh, we all could have had, you know, Lyme disease. And so I am so thankful that we are really giving the information out to our communities mm-hmm. and saying, this is what um, mm-hmm. is happening. And if, if, let's say uh, we're not able to get through everything on the show. Is there a website that they can look on Buckham County to um, buckhamcounty.org slash public health will have great information. Of- 
course, the CDC as well. Yes. You could just put in the filter what you want to, mm -hmm. you know, mosquito borne or tick borne. Yes. So I want to make sure that information gets out there yeah. before we get of too course. far along. So, um, the, the CDC has issued warnings about global increase in, I'm going to say this so wrong, uh, did you? Did, didn't you? Didn't gay. Didn't gay. Okay. Dengue. Dengue. You know what? That, that is not how they taught me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start over and I'm saying it right. The CDC has issued warnings about a global increase in dengue virus infection. What precautions should travelers take when going to an affected area? Because we know this is travel time. Of course, yeah. Travelers should use mosquito repellent. Mm -hmm. They should bring a good um, repellent containing DEET mm -hmm. with them. Um, they should wear clothing that's treated with a product called permethrin, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic product that you can uh, treat all of your clothing with, especially mm -hmm. your pants and your shirts, um, sleeping bags, things like that. And yeah. it will stand up to approximately 70 washings. Wow. So it keeps giving protection. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're sending your kids off to camp, you need to treat all their things with permethrin. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, also making sure that where they go is safe with screens mm -hmm. or if it's, you know, like screens over bedding, yeah. if it's a tropical area, um, stay indoors during the high peak mm -hmm. time for a mosquito, which is early dawn dusk usually, where they like to feed, mm -hmm. things like that. So the Promethean, can, is that over the counter? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. And you probably get those like the best at like fishing and hunting and places. You get it at Walmart. Walmart, okay. You can go order it online, fishing and hunting. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome sauce. Mm -hmm. okay. So, and we're talking about like folks traveling. Now, if someone is traveling like out of country, what are some of the diseases that are coming back that we're seeing that are coming from out of country? Well, that would be the dengue, malaria, uh -huh. okay. chikungunya, and Zika. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And what can happen is, is if you come back and you're diagnosed, say, with dengue, mm -hmm. we really want you, while you're symptomatic, staying indoors, especially during that high mm -hmm. peak feeding time for mosquitoes. Yes. Because if one of our mosquitoes bites you, they get and get your blood and you're infected with dengue, it could be introduced into our mosquito population mm -hmm. potentially. Oh, wow. So that's the bigger message for travelers. Now, if you have dengue, chances are you're not gonna feel like going outside anyway, mm -hmm. but because you get pretty sick, mm -hmm. you can get pretty sick, but um, it is important to know. And also, um, let me plug our foreign travel clinic, mm -hmm. um, things like malaria and um, other encephalitis, you could potentially get a vaccination mm -hmm. before you travel for a, a particular um, disease and or take some medication with you that you take every day to help prevent something like malaria. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So another question, I know um, you had mentioned this on this before, what is the role the community can play in help helping to control the mosquito and tick population? But we said the tip and toss. So tip and toss. It's mm -hmm. more of the same, mm -hmm. you know, and really talking to your friends, family, mm -hmm. and neighbors about it, right? It's an ongoing conversation. Mm -hmm. And your children. One of the greatest things about tip and toss is that it is a catchy little phrase. Yes. And kids love it. And they are the ones who are outside looking at mm -hmm. everything. And so they can make a game out of, like, yeah. let's play tip and toss. And then they go and do all that, right? Yes. But then... It's so important to, um, when we're speaking to kids, and I might digress here a little bit, to check their bodies, mm -hmm. you know? Um, we get, A, you wanna wash off that deep at the mm -hmm. end of the day, so it's a good time to get into those little secret places on your body where the bugs like to hide, like yeah. your hairline or mm -hmm. in a crevice somewhere yeah. or something mm -hmm. like that, where your pants meet your waist or something like mm -hmm. that. They like to get in there and embed a little bit. And so then you just document it and that, it, the bite will probably be red, mm -hmm. you know, but again, not all pack disease. Yeah. So, okay, what about ticks? Because like, ticks aren't just like, thank God they don't fly. Let's just say that right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They fly? Well, they quest. Yeah. They wait around at the, you know, on trees, tree limbs, brushy areas. The and they wait for you to come by and they Launch. fall yeah. on you. Yeah. Uh, they're hitchhikers. They call that questing. 
Yeah, they're hitchhikers. They jump on your dog or... So a new level of fear <laughs> has been yes. Exactly. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. The more you know. Yeah. <laughs> the more you know, the more you want to stay in That's right. Okay. So now that you all have destroyed my um, question, so how are we able to protect from... And now I'm itching. So <laughs> how, do, how are we able to protect from ticks? Um, like, is there something we need to spray in our trees? on our yards because that's like a really hard because you know those yeah. chemicals if you have yeah. a garden and things garden like that. your cats your dogs you don't yes. really want to do that you want to be you want to be your own advocate for yourself yeah. and your children and your friends yeah mm -hmm. you want to check your body I say every six hours and that may sound like a lot but if your kids go out and play in the morning and they come in for lunch give a quick check mm -hmm. and then when they come in after dinner and they have their bath time, do a really thorough check. The earlier you find that tick and take it off, yes. the less chance it has to transmit disease. Mm -hmm. They need to be on your body for a certain amount of time mm -hmm. to transmit disease. Mm -hmm. Some shorter than others, mm -hmm. like six hours up to 24 hours. But if you're not checking and you're not putting that incident on your calendar, mm -hmm. then you're at a loss when all of a sudden you or your child wakes up with a freight train running through their head. Oh, it can wow. be a significant headache, um, especially for Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, mm -hmm. um, which that one can also be deadly. Mm -hmm. And the other ones can have a long sequel of um, mm -hmm. suffering. <laughs> you had mentioned earlier about properly uh, removing a tick. What is, do you have, how do you remove a tick properly? Okay, so you should get a clean pair of tweezers. Mm -hmm. And you should meet the tick where his little head touches your skin. I'm so mm. sorry. And pull straight up. Mm. Don't yank it down. Don't put a hot match on it. Don't do it. Just pull it straight out mm -hmm. and then dispose of it. Okay. So you're not supposed to keep the tick. Back in the day, they would say, keep the tick. I have no desire to keep a tick. I know people who put them in a Ziploc baggie and put them in the freezer. There are laboratories in the world where you can send the tick off and they will test it. But if you're going to do that, you might, you should test it for all ticks, you know, mm -hmm. not just Lyme, because what if it, you got Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So you should test it for all of them. And that can be pricey. But if you know that you were bit, you know, on July 1st, and July 15th, you've got this terrible headache and you see a rash on your wrist and arms, chances are you've got something going on and you mm -hmm. go to the doctor and it's one antibiotic for all of them. So that kind of takes the guesswork out of it. But if you get that antibiotic on board quickly, then you have a great chance of just, you know, mm -hmm. returning to normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. um, and, and just to, you know, bounce off of some of those other protective measures, we've talked about deep and screens and sorry to ping pong a little bit, but um, outdoor clothing now is treated with those things. Mm -hmm. It's got SPF in them and mm -hmm. some of them have permethrin already in them. You can buy them already purchased. And you can also tuck your pants into your socks if you're out hiking. Mm. Most people are in shorts this time of year, mm -hmm. but if you're an avid hiker or something like that, lighter colored clothes. If you're wearing long sleeves or long pants, you can tuck the pant leg into socks and the lighter color, A, helps with you overheating, but B, mm -hmm. will help you see oh. a vector crawling on you. Oh. Yeah. Fun. I, oh, yes. I know, yeah. right? I didn't, because I'm going, I'm going to now Halen real soon. And we're going to go see the trees. And now I'm just like, are we gonna go see the trees and the ticks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well they live there. I so know, right now. So but... you just check your body. You do these <laughs> simple, simple steps, yeah. really, but you have to be consistent with it. Mm -hmm. And so and we talk about the headache. What are some other symptoms? Because we want to make sure because folks would like I, I don't want you all to be out there and uh, you got bit by a mosquito and you're like, oh my god, I have a headache. It's an excruciating headache, nothing like you've ever felt before. Yeah. Um, it, it would be the headache that you would think um, 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 the coyote from the um, um, road runner would have after he gets hit in the head. It would be that headache, right? Yeah. And fever. And fever. Significant fever yeah. for, for the spotted fever. Mm -hmm. It's in the name, right? Yeah. Um, with Lyme, it is typically joint swelling, mm -hmm. and the joint swelling can go, it can migrate 
-hmm. It can be in your left knee one day and a week later it can be in your right knee. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, myalgia, muscle, muscle pain, mm -hmm. uh, joint swelling, um, the erythro migraines, mm -hmm. which is a bullseye rash, which is classic for Lyme. Mm -hmm. um, and it is so important and I'm just going to put yes. this plug out there when you go to the doctor because you see a bullseye rash on your body insist that the doctor measure it. Mm -hmm. That is one thing that if it is not measured on my tool, I can't count it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know you got Lyme, but I can't count it. So wow. there's wow. probably more incidents in our community than we even know, A, because sometimes people don't even get tested. Mm -hmm. They just get treated. It's like, oh yeah, let's treat you, bye. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you should always get treated. Even if they draw labs on you, you should get the treatment right then and there. Mm -hmm. They suspect that you have it. Get your treatment now. Don't wait for your lab work to return. Mm -hmm. So those are things that I want the public to know to advocate mm -hmm. for themselves because um, there are some people that don't believe Lyme is here. Mm -hmm. And it has definitely migrated to North Carolina. Oh, you know, okay. it started in the Northeast, just like Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever started in the Rocky Mountains, but mm -hmm. it's here just like armadillos are coming up from Central America. Mm -hmm. So things migrate mm -hmm. and we have to mm -hmm. bear the disease burden from them. And when you say measure, it's just a physical measurement yep. of the rash itself? Yep, How you know, five centimeters, 10, you know, and it can get diffuse the longer you wait. It can mm -hmm. start out really tight and then all of a sudden it's part on your arm and part here. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the swelling, the rash, the fever, the headache, the joint pain, mm -hmm. muscle pain, um, the general sense of feeling like, I guess in layman's terms, like I got the flu. Why mm -hmm. do I have the flu, but I don't have the flu? Uh -huh. yeah. You know, that kind of feeling. And is that something that people can document themselves? Would you encourage the public to say, oh, this is a bull's eye rash, go grab a ruler, document it yourself mm -hmm. with your, or is that something that has to be done in the doctor's office? The doc I mean, okay. you can do it yourself and you can say, hey, when I first got this rash, it was like, two inches across and here it is now it's like you know my whole thigh or something like that yeah but I have to have it from the provider oh, okay. um, and oftentimes we'll get a measurement that says oh it's as big as a bagel and I'm like well was that a mini bagel was that the inside of the bagel was that the outside of the bagel so it you know and that's why I say our our investigation is very stringent because once oh, we wow. meet that threshold then we know okay so well, apparently in the South, not only do we give directions by uh, <laughs> off of other yeah. instead as long as an oak tree. <laughs> yeah. So, folks, you got to give actual numbers. <laughs> actual we prefer it. Yes, yes. Well, when in doubt, go to your doctor's office, folks. <laughs> Clinical data. Okay, so we are having to wrap up. And this has been amazing. Absolutely amazing. And you, you, I know people are probably like, oh, this is going to be terrible. No, this is actually, you could come back. I'm pretty sure I got about 54 more questions <laughs> <laughs> that you could scare us with. That's right. That's and so right. I, what I always do, I like to go around and just offer one last piece of information that you want folks to have. And Stacy, since you chimed in, you, I'm gonna go ahead and close you in this because you're on my right. Go ahead and tell us one thing that you want our audience to know. Well, the, you know, seems like if you have questions or concerns, talk to your provider, but also our communicable disease team here in Buncombe County is a great resource. If you do have questions about something you might have been exposed to or immunizations you might need, Public health is here to help. Mm -hmm. That's right. And my program is 24 seven. Yes. So there's always a communicable disease nurse on call and there are no stupid questions. We love engaging with the public. Mm -hmm. um, the safer we can keep you, the better our job is. Awesome. Leonard? Um, I guess my, my um, final words would just be be preventative. And so we done heard some good things around tip and toss, so going around your property looking at um, where, um, if there's places where mosquitoes can um, actually survive and start reproducing as well. So just looking for those areas that where you can do the tip and toss and also wearing um, um, repellent. That's one of the key things I know a lot of people um, when you think about it, you say it don't work, but I always just kind of the same thing with sunscreen, cover your skin, make sure that you're protecting yourself. 
Um, we also heard some things around where lighter clothing sometimes can help in helping identifying if something is crawling on you um, and things of that nature. And so I just think, just be preventative, think about, look around your property to protect yourself. And as they say, if you have any questions, um, you always can go to Buncombe County dot um, BunkerCounty.org, um, Public Health, and find out more information. And always uh, reach out to your provider as well if you feel that you have been exposed to a thing. Don't just put it off. But um, when you don't feel well, check in with your provider. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When it down, go check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to say thank you all for coming today. Thank you so much for engaging our community you know this was not meant to scare anyone it is to inform you so do not go into your house and um, close up all the um, doors and everything and and wait (laughs) until it's cold to come outside that's not what we're saying to do we're saying like Leonard said be proactive be safe and also educate others because we know that this is a, a a wonderful time of year to get out and enjoy nature but also let's be um, cognizant of all the things that nature has whether they're good things to offer or bad things to offer we need to be cognizant of what those things are um so with that being said thank you all so much for coming and we hope to have you again and you have been tapped in thank you for listening to tapped in Buncombe County's half hour to empower here on WRES 100.7 FM in Nashville. Learn more about today's topics at buncombecounty.org. Otherwise, stay tuned for more great episodes coming up.